Um, my name is Haley Smith, and I'm with the United States Department of State in Washington, D.C., and I run a program called the Global Innovation Design Technology Program, which works with young science and technology entrepreneurs in emerging economies, primarily in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Um, and uh, I'm Dan Young. I love those shirts, by the way. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I'm the director of the doctoral program in business administration at Holy Vision College, uh, and also uh, I teach entrepreneurial marketing here. Hi guys, I'm Christina Pellicane. I work at Foreign Entrepreneurship as the Director of Commercialization Programs. So I help a lot of our technologists at the university get started and uh, commercialize their research. Gamers want to be satisfied after they play a video game. It is sometimes because of the lack of interaction between them and the characters, and at the times the graphics. Due to the success of on console and mobile games, the video game industry remained one of the fastest growing markets in the world. Back in 2013, the video game industry made more than twice as much as the global box office, because people are no longer content to watch media in a passive manner. In 2017, the gamers prioritize visual fidelity. Now, potential buyers seek from the highest possible graphic quality from their games over any other factors. But it's still not enough because they want to feel immersed. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we're presenting to you the Game Soul. What is the Game Soul? The Game Soul is a both a domestic and an arcade business device which intends to address the most felt need from interaction. It represents the progress of technology combined in one format as to present to the customer a captivating product with a satisfying quality. It is a virtual reality capsule of gaming where the gamer will be integrated more than ever before in his game, while the only one controller will be his own body. It is equipped with a virtual reality headset, microphone extension for voice recognition, inertial motion capture equipped with haptic devices, optical system for both a better motion capture and face recognition, an omnidirectional treadmill and a waist belt for motion flexibility. Throughout the game, there will be three modes. An accurate mode, mostly for those that want a perfect imitation of their self. An autocorrect mode, for mostly for those that don't know how to correctly move and want a corrective form of the motion. And a learning mode, where the player can actually learn how to correctly move due to tutorials prepared just for that. In general, all customers are located all over the globe, where they have differences in age or gender. But a breakdown of the video games player in the United States in 2017 informs us that the average age of a game buyer is 38 years old, and the average age of a gamer is 35 years old. As a result, we decided to focus more on the U.S. as a target market um, because of this matter really, knowing that we can expect more stable economic revenues from the customers here. There are many competitors in this market we are aiming. We can count um, Control V, Kinect, um, the Void, Control VR, the um, VR World New York. Though we plan on applying the term of competition, which consists of um, partnering with some of our competitors, as the games will be like an added value to them. Do we want to know our unique value proposition? Don't worry, I got you back. Because that's what I'm here for. We are unique because we meet all the five big trends in 2017, which are facial recognition, voice recognition, but graphics qualities, but just to control, and the most important, a new virtual reality mode. So, we bring value to the customers because gamers will no longer be sedentary, and the games will have less negative impacts on the gamers' health. At the end, what do we propose? We are offering that affordable virtual world experience, which is the game soul. Initial investments are expected to be around 600K. 150K for the prototype phase and 450K for the market phase. After this, we'll need an 18 months for the fine-tuning of our marketing, fine-tuning of our prototype, and fine-tuning of our profitability expectancies. After this, we also need 12 months for the from funding roadshows and for the launching of the product. Our business model is divided in two, B2B and B2C. B2B um, revenue stream is um, our catch, um, with the Alcat partners, we are planning to do revenue sharing, and we are planning to do the B2B sale of the product to retail stores just like GameStop or Best Buy. B2C sale of the product is also expected directly through our um, website or our warehouse. In our first year, our, um, with a very conservative approach, we are expecting uh, to make slight losses. 
though they will be quickly recovered going into the second year as our learning curve will increase our sales and decrease our um, operating expenses because we will have better control over them. So with that said, in our first year, we should have losses of about $700,000. $700, but in the third year, our profits should be as high as $2.6 million at least. So this is... So this awesome project is composed by an amazing team. First of all, we get Anthony Nelson, the head the graph of the project, Nisa Masidina and Terry Thomas, the advertising and marketing advisor, and Sean Oliver, our head designer. For further information, you can visit our website or contact us on our email. Diamond Challenge, we're asking you to trust us and give us this huge opportunity to launch our product in the market. Together, let, let us bring the game to the next level. level. Thank, Thank you. you.